All right, I'm going to uh, go ahead and call this meeting to order um, September 9th, 2013. Roll call, please. Joe. Here. Bill. Absent. Ralph. Here. Kathy. Here. Kim. Here. Mary Jane. Here. Okay, we're going to amend the agenda here a little bit. So uh, soon we'll have another meeting later on. So soon, if you'd like to take the stand, go ahead. Um, basically, I'm here to uh, kind of update you a little bit on the street project. Um, the milling is scheduled to take place on Wednesday. The milling unit will be here. Um, they're going to be continuing the sidewalk uh, work. Uh, then they'll come in with the paving and they'll do the wedge as well as the paving on the, uh, East Main Street. And then the paving on Shady Lane and on Lincoln Lane. Um, Bill, or um, Bob Spittler from Wagner Paving was here today. I uh, looked at Shady Lane and you looked at Lincoln. Um, we're probably going to recommend what's called an edge mill, which is where they basically come in and mill the edge off where the gutter plate is. And then we won't mill the middle because there's next to no asphalt there anyway. There's only about two to three inches, so you're going to basically be milling into your uh, base anyway. Uh, by doing that, we save the gutter plate, which you know allows the drainage to still work, but we'll end up crowning the road a little bit. Uh, both of those streets are really relatively flat, so crowning them probably is going to be a better thing than worse because it will help the water shut off a little bit, get them into the gutter, and then, you know, let it run uh, down. So um, I really think that's probably the best thing to do considering the fact there's not that much asphalt there to begin with. Uh, it'll probably decrease the milling by about a third. Um, I do have a change order this evening here for you for the whole thing, which once we get done, then we'll adjust it backwards. But in order for them to um, be able to proceed, we do need to pass the change order. Um, the change order also includes um, the step at Bud Reeves and the step at the apartment building, which we talked about before and you guys had approved before at $750 for the Bud Reed garage step and $350 for the concrete step at the apartment building that replaced that old wood step. So the total change order is $110,183 even, um, and that includes those two items plus the planing, the tack coat, the intermediate asphalt, and the surface asphalt addition for Shady Lane from the cul-de-sac to DeFredrico, and then Lincoln Lane, or Lincoln Street, I forget what it's called, Lane, from the cul-de-sac to Wren, where we stopped there at Wren. So, if somebody wants to make a motion to accept that change order, please. No, there, that's the four that he needs to sign. But if you guys want to look at them, you're more than welcome to pass them around and look at them. <laughs> yes, they are, because I have to have four originals. I have questions. I need a motion, please. I make a motion that we approve a uh, change order amount of $110,183 for the uh, removal of plate steps, removal of wood steps, additional planning, plating, additional tack coat, additional intermediate asphalt, additional surface asphalt. Sir, second. Second. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Brad. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Kim. Yes. Mary Yes. Um, you need to sign those all four of them by operators. Um, today they also did some base repair. We had um, a couple places on Main Street and on Washington Street when the asphalt truck was here that the base gave way. So they did do some base repair in a couple places today and that will end up being an extra cost. But it was something that we needed to do in order to stabilize the street base before we do the paving and the wedge. Um, we've also, we still need a price on the retaining wall and I think uh, Rick's kind of handling that at this point. I have given him the spec, um, the last spec that we got from ProGrade uh, and I think they uh, quoted this retaining wall at $9,500. So uh, Rick's going to kind of look into maybe getting a different price from somebody else outside the contract. Thank you. Um, also, um, we've talked with ProGrade and basically told them that we need them to have everything except any kind of final cleanup done by the 20th so that there'll be about a week in there for the Apple Fest for the street sweeper and whatever kind of final cleanup that we need. 
their contract actually gives them to the end of September, but we've asked them to try to be done by the 20th. So that's what they're hopefully working hard to accomplish. Um, does anybody have any questions about the project or anything that's going on there? We, did uh, we get another price on that uh, entrance way to the basement? I think my understanding is is the, that um, I think did Heath talk with you and Billy about that, and you guys were going to get some type of a cover for that. Yeah, we've got that taken care of. Okay. Underneath the reeds. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to put uh, instead of the steel plate, we're going to have a aluminum plate made up. Uh, have a vent to go over top that. We got a recess. We're going to sit it down to where it's flush, and then we're going to counter uh, some locks on the side so people can't remove them. So that's taken care okay. of. I thought so. I thought yeah. Heath had told me you guys had taken kind of taken care of that on your own. So. Yeah. Anyway, other questions? Okay. So, uh, grinding will all be in everywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll come in and so grind they, everything everywhere. And they're coming in uh, Wednesday. The weekend for the, for the baby game I don't know exactly what the paving schedule is. I didn't hear it. Probably really depends on you know what the milling takes. I would say. You know, probably Friday at the earliest, and they could maybe do the paving on Monday and Tuesday of next week. So I don't know for sure. So Looking but, good. So but the good. idea is that the paving will be milling, and the paving will all be done. And you know, hopefully there may be some topsoil and seeding and some things like that that are left after the 20th. But I want the sidewalks done and everything so that you know when you have the Apple Fest, other than minus some grass, that you know everything you, know, you got new the new sidewalks, the new streets, and. You've got that to show to everybody, so. Okay. That's, that's there. The other thing I wanted to let you know, too, um, I did find out this afternoon that the scoring, the final scoring sheet came out in advance of Thursday's meeting with the Issue 2 people, and um, you uh, were ranked number seven of 29 projects that were funded. Mm -hmm. So um, the funding for the West Cherry Street project will come through. Um, kind of uh, thinking about that in advance, um, there's a little section of that that will be left down there at the end. And I did some estimating. We're probably talking about $47,000 worth of work down there. Uh, so you might kind of keep that in the back of your mind for CDBG money next year. That would be a nice little amount of money. You know, if you could put in, you know, 5 or 10 and ask for the rest from the county, that would be a nice little project for them. And we could tag team it with your issue two money. So. Yeah, I'm just kind of keep that in mind, but I didn't want to let you know that was good news that we found out today. So, good. anyway, and that's all I have. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Does everyone have a chance to uh, read the minutes from last month's meeting? If so, I need a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mary Jane. Yes. Need a motion to approve the warrants and payroll timesheets? I need to be approved. I'll second it. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Mary Jane. Yes. Kim. Yes. Need a motion for approval transfer uh, of the police revenue from general fund to police fund of 1380. I second it. Roll call, please. Ralph? Yes. Joe? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Approve the police fund monthly operating funds transfer. Motion, please. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Kim? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Need a motion to approve the interest transfer? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Ken. Yes. Mary Jane. Yes. Okay, next is uh, Peggy Crabtree. Can you please? Thank you. Hi, Peggy. Hello. I'm Peggy Crabtree. I live at 123 East Main Street. And uh, I'm uh, stopping in today to talk with you about uh, a tree that we had there. Um, in 1998, the city of Eaton went around to property owners in their city to ask them if they wanted a tree in front of their house. Well, the owner said yes, 
but then my son bought the property a year later and the tree was planted while he was at work. Well, they didn't want the tree. But the city of Eaton said, well, do with it whatever you want to, just so we don't have to dig it up. So we took the flowering crab apple to our property and planted it. Uh, so it's about, it was about 15 years old. Uh, and when ProGrade came along to work on the project, I asked them, I said, uh, you know, what about my tree? They said, well, it's in the plans to stay. So I was happy because it's, it's a beautiful tree. Uh, you know, it blooms and it's great. Um, but then a couple weeks later, Mayor Rick paid me a visit and explained that no one in the village had been allowed to keep their tree on all of these re rebuilding projects. And he said that uh, there had been, uh, you know, uh, uh, something passed and I could come down here and I could get a copy of the approved tree list. I thought, okay, that's good. So uh, I did get the, uh, the paper, uh, and tonight I got the tree list, and I do see that my tree is on the small tree list, the white flowering. It says great for urban use. So uh, I'd like to see if I can replant a new tree where the previous one was. Is, as long as the tree meets any of this uh, from the ordinance that we passed in 2007, if the if the tree is on this list, uh, that that is made to grow yes. down, White flower. there will be no issue with replanting the tree, as long as it's one that grows down and not under the new sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So, as long as the tree is on here, uh, there's not an issue. You all agree? Right. Yes. That's, that's, that's what that that is. Yeah, that's what that is. Well, hopefully okay. someday we can go down and collect more trees that we took out. We just haven't had the money to do so. Eventually, hopefully we'll accumulate some money so at some point in time that we can go down through Washington Street and plant some of the trees in some of the green spaces that we have that is on the list. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to do it up to this date. But hopefully someday we will. So. Okay. And that'll be in the minutes? Yes. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Linda Ray. I'm Linda Ray, and I'm here on behalf of the Apple Fest Committee seeking the council and mayor's uh, permission to make a slight change to our parade. We're going to begin at the cemetery come down uh, Washington Street, but we want to turn at the red front and go up Walnut Street to Spring and go north on Spring Street and disband at the Catholic Church. Uh, we have permission from the Catholic Church to do so, and that's why I'm here. And if anybody doesn't have brochures, I'd like for the council to have some on the Apple Fest. Thank you. Does anyone have an objection to the parade route? I don't think anybody's going to object to that. And uh, hopefully, uh, court of season will have things in order for you on Main Street or there for the car show and everything. So we've been kind of shoving them because we've been telling them about the deadline. So hopefully, uh, everything will be uh, ready for you folks when the Apple Fest goes on. So I see no issue at all with the parade route. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rebecca, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your last name. Please. My name is Rebecca T. Meyer, and I am. Uh, my address is 302 East Main Street. I don't live there. I pay rent there. But on July 10th, at approximately 7.30 a.m., my dog, Rascal, was shot in my backyard three times. I called um, Chris Driver. After they shot my dog, they took him off the collar, laid him on my porch. My kids are in the house asleep. Um, driver didn't say anything about the gunshots. Didn't go ask anybody if they'd seen anything, heard anything. Uh, this dog was my family, my life. And I'm just uh, 
scared now for my safety, for my kids. Um, on the report, it says there were several juveniles at my house. When Chris Driver arrived, there were two juveniles. One was my daughter, she is 12, and one was my son, he's 11. That was it. On July the 20th, I got a phone call, and it says, this is Patrick Buckley's sister. If you don't quit going down there asking questions about my brother, I will find you, hunt you down, find you, and beat your effing brains in. Uh, excuse me just a second. And before we get too far along in this discussion, what exactly is it you're bringing, you're asking to the council this evening? Because if you, More have, safety. if you have an issue, if you have an issue with the police department, then we have a safety committee that, that this should go before. It's not the police department. It's just one individual police officer that I can't call if I feel like I'm being threatened. But there again, we need to. I try to call you. We need to address the safety committee with this issue, issue uh, because this is something that the safety committee handles. This is not something that will come before council. Okay, I try to call you, and I spoke with you on the phone. Uh, I do remember you calling me, but I don't remember you asking me for a meeting with the safety committee. You said you would get back with me. You never did. You issued a. You said you had a problem. I asked about the problem. I inquired about that, but you did not say anything to me about okay. setting up a meeting with the case. Yeah, I would like to do that. I so would. If we have an issue here regarding the police department or an officer, if you would like to schedule yes. a meeting with the safety committee, then we will do that, and you can come in and talk with the safety committee, and then we will discuss that okay. at that point. At that place, uh, the council is not. Okay, I didn't know. That's why I'm asking because yeah, I don't feel safe. Okay. Okay. So if you would. Uh, How do I do that? Uh, you can contact the chief or me. I can't contact you. Well, I'm hard to catch up with, but you can catch me down at the restaurant usually with that number. Okay. So, and then uh, we'll set up a day for a safety committee okay. and come and express your concerns there. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thank you. I pay rent there, but I don't live there. Okay. I'm just thinking about your children being there. We're not there. Can you uh, be here Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock? Me? Yes. Yeah. Wednesday, this Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we've got a safety committee arranged. Mm -hmm. If you will be here, we will take uh, the issue up then. Do you need a picture for uh, Just if you'll attend the meeting, we'll discuss yeah. whatever's taking place at the meeting and the safety committee. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Moran. Yeah, my name is John Moran. I live at 111 Huttons here and have for 18 years. I'd like to know why the council will not get the creeks cleaned up in this town when there's an ordinance on the books. Uh, we've taken dirt outside of the town and dumped it in our well-filled area. And when it rains, it's going to come right back in through Shanks Ditch. And I think the creek needs to be cleaned. There's debris, 4 by 4 signs, diapers, and everything down in that creek. And nobody seems to care that there is an ordinance y'all have about keeping the property clean. And it's high time that you all got busy and got it done before we have a flood like we did a few years ago. Which property are we talking about? Oh, Shanks oh, I, Ditch. I, I, oh. Shanks Ditch I, I have Shanks Ditch run through my property. And if you want to go over and look at it, it's spotless. Well, my neighbor's is spotless because I help her keep it clean, too. So it's really from what I can see, a lot of that goes back to the individual property owners. Right. It, it's clean. Well, they're supposed to be, but the Army Corps of Engineers, when they rebuild it after the flood, turned control over to the town. The uh, town then controlled not, it. That's not correct. The town or the county? The, the, county, county. the county took control of Shane's Ditch. Right. And the county now is trying to lay that back onto the village, which right. we are in contesting. Well, in your uh, property ordinance here, uh, it states that anything over eight inches on the property is uh, considered uh, all premises and exterior property shall be maintained free from weeds and or plant growth in excess of eight inches. All noxious weeds shall be prohibited. Weeds that shall be defined as grasses, annual plants, and vegetation 
other than trees or shrubs provided, however. This term shall not include cultivated flowers and gardens. Now my neighbor, she put a lot of flowers into hers. And we keep it clean. You go to the other side of the street and you'll see four by fours, ladders, fence, diapers, and all that's going to build up when that runoff comes back into town. And the, tree, the creek down here at the other end of town, south end, is just as bad. I've walked both of them. All the way down here to the Blue Bridge and down to the Railroad Bridge. There's something that needs to be done with that before we have a flood. Because it's not going to take much for that to back up and put everybody underwater. Well, if it's the county's responsibility and not ours. Well, I mean, everybody's blaming everybody, you know. And then a few years ago, they redirected water coming off of the uh, Cardinal Hill up there and put a pipe in and stuck more water in the Shanks Ditch, which wasn't a real bright move. Well, I live next to Where else would you propose the water should go, go not in a ditch? It goes into the ditch at Regals. I live right behind Cardinal Hill, and I probably have I know where you water live. in my ditch now since that was done that I had before. I'll come down on my street look at the it creek. Be down on your end, Johnny. Yeah. I'm speaking for my own. Go down to, to the Mills's end on High Street and look at it. Go down to the library and look at it. You know, walk it and look at it. Take a look at it. A bunch of water comes through. It ain't going to take much to jam it up. I'm right there. I, I watch it every day. You know, and I walk to my ditch every day. You know, the last time we had a flood, I lost a driveway out of the deal. I and lost, two vehicles. I lost a lot of ground myself. So. You know, but I mean, nobody's doing anything about it. And, you know, you have ordinances now supposedly on the books. We may have ordinances. The, the county's supposed to be in charge of the ditch, and we don't have the finances to take care of the ditch. So, uh, you know, there's a controversy. You know, that, that, was the, that was the Preble County to take care of that. And now that their funds are running short, they're trying to lay it off on us, and we're disputing that. We're saying it's still their responsibility. Well, it should be the proper counter. I mean, maybe, maybe it might be a benefit to remind people in the uh, newspaper that. Well, you, can, you can't even. When it rains, you can't, you, you, you can't drive down the alley uh, between Hutton and High without it rubbing on your car when it rains or even on a normal day without brushing in the brush. I've cut it back a couple times, but I've got tired of doing it for people. You know, I figure they want to let it flood, let it flood. I got flood insurance. I don't have to rebuild. That's less money for the town, less money for the county. Let it flood. I mean, that's the way I look at it. But I think it's, you know, it's up to the council to take the lead on this and get it done. If it's the council's responsibility, well, yes, but if it's the county's responsibility, no. If it's in the village limits, it's, it should fall under your but, code. But the county, like Rick said, the county has taken it over. It's like the bridges, I think. Oh, yeah, the bridges are in it's, terrible it's shape. kind of out of our hands, Johnny. Oh, I mean, Some degree. what are you going to do when a bridge falls down? We're going to close the road and right down the lane. Yeah, you know, I mean, you got three of them that's about ready to go now. I mean, go and stand there. That's what will take place because the county is trying to throw it back on the villages, and the village doesn't have the money to put up a three hundred thousand dollar bridge. It's going to be more than that, Rick. I know there'll that. Be a, there'll be a closed sign put on those roads. That's the only thing yeah. we'll be able to do. I mean, some of them are really savage getting underneath there and look at the rebar. And totally understand that, but there again, yeah. you're, you're talking about $300,000 for bridge, this, this village doesn't have any kind of money. Well, if, so. if the property owners would just take the time in the winter when the leaves are off of this stuff and go in and clean it, they could clean it with one-tenth the effort, you know, because you can't get anybody to do anything. Uh, Mary Jane had to get on Robbie, and he'd come down and he picked up a little bit of stuff that he threw in the creek, but he didn't get down in the creek and remove the other stuff. It's still there. You know. And that was a while back. Yeah, that was a while back, but you know, you can't get anybody to do nothing with it. And I got a CD with uh, a Rocky Ford that was given to me last year. People took videos. I've been, I've been working on trying to get a grant, and I haven't heard back. I, I know they like to take our money to the county and not give us nothing back. But, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, maybe take some money from them somehow, you know. And send them letters, uh, just getting the weeds down. But it says not to touch trees, and there's so many new trees that's grown up. Well, they're all Chinese elm and scrub yeah. trees that aren't worth anything. They're not like oak or walnut or anything like that. But you either got to cut them, you either got to dig them out because you can't spray them because you can't put right. spray in the water. Right, I know so that. It's yeah, one, you can. One issue well, after another. 
depending on what type of spray. Yeah, you've got to use the right kind of spray. Now, I got, and, um, I had called the state on that, and they said it was okay to spray. They didn't specify any. Well, you can't use a sterilizer or nothing like that in there because it gets under water. But. Well, I know that, but I had called the state, and they said that you can spray it. But I mean, I had to clean it one time from Spring Street to uh, the middle of uh, Hutton and High, and we got drove back up. Nobody wanted to take care of it. The town helped to clean it there at one time. Yeah. And, uh, it was hard to help haul, haul the stuff away. But it's just getting out of hand, and it's just setting the town up for a flood. Yeah. You're right. And I want to put it on record that way if it does flood. You know, I mean, I got flood insurance now, so got a flood. The only thing I can do is probably send them a letter, try to get them a couple of weeks. Actually, I'd love it to flood because I can take my money and leave town. <laughs> Not have to rebuild and leave an empty lot. No more money for schools. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you.
taking the curve down farther across from the red thread in front of the Well, the building. Billy is starting to paint okay. this week. I talked with him this morning about getting the painting yeah. done and the weeds alone, spraying alone, washing everything, everything ready for Apple Fest. So that paint is about to proceed. Okay. So, yeah. But we had laid off that discussion back there, we had cut that down, one of those parking places down last year for that across the street there at the, uh, the rehab place because they used to have two and they would cut it down to one memory surgery because people turned the corner. It was kind of tight on that. So, it's real yeah, tight. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be me and me and me, so. Is there anything else under finance? Nope. Uh, actually, there is. We have a uh, resolution here. <coughs> uh, Chris had some uh, had time coming, and uh, for personal reasons, uh, we uh, need to uh, move some money over to cover his vacation. And I have a resolution here that I'll read for that matter. It's resolution number 2013-12. A re resolution by the Council of the Village of New Paris, Provo County, Ohio, to approve a one-time vacation buyout for chief driver of 200 hours, five weeks earned, whereas police chief pressure driver has a balance of earned vacation time due, and whereas chief driver has requested pay for 200 hours, five weeks of this time due to family medical emergency, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Village of New Paris, Provo County, Ohio, that the Village Financial Officer is hereby authorized to distribute to the Chief Driver 200 hours of the pure vacation pay. Date this ninth day of September. Discussion at all? It's a lot of money at one time. It, it is, but he, he had it coming to him. He had to build up vacation time. He had a medical emergency, and so the money was uh, we need to uh, approve this and move it over. We can speak to the auditor's office yes. about this. Um, the deal that the money is there and, and it is due. And the auditors told us that we had to do this in a resolution. So that's okay, but I don't. From now on, it seems we need to make some changes because I, I think well, I, I have that going out. I have that down to bring up no, my back. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. We got to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Okay. 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 And roll call, please. Two. Yes. Brown. Yes. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Mary Jane. Yes. Now I believe we need a mercy on this. Yes. I need a motion to uh, pass the resolution 2013 as emergency, declare emergency, and forgive the three reading rule. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mary Jane. Yes. Kim. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Brown. Yes. Okay, Kathy, you have some further comments about this? On that one, I, I, I feel that we need to, Joe and I as ordinance people, the on the ordinance committee, need to deal with someone from the Board of Public Affairs and just really go through the employee handbook ordinance, um, get it up to date. I'd like some discussion with the council and the entire board who will be bringing some things back to you. Um, just so I, I, I feel the same way Mary Jane feels. It's not that we didn't want to pay this, we did. Because it had become accrued and was due. But we don't like to, I don't think it's a very good idea to allow it to build up quite like this. I don't think we have anybody else who has a bill, um, you know, an amount in this as the chief. The chief can't take vacation sometimes. He has to be the chief. So there, you know, there are things that uh, extenuating circumstances that have apparently allowed this to build up. But I think it's something that we need to take a look at 
because truthfully, if you have that much accrued, it ought to be put aside somewhere. It can't be used or spent for anything else. And, and it would make a large hole in your budget at times. It's possible they it could. I think we're all right with this one, but I do think we need to look at our rules and look at our handbook and look at that ordinance. And I'd like permission to ask for someone to, from the board to form another committee and we'll all get together. We'll bring things back here before we ever make any proposals because I want everybody's input. I want to know how everyone feels about it. I mean, I know how I feel, but, and I'm trying to be fair and I'm trying to keep us out of trouble, which none of us want that. But uh, I think it does need to be looked into, so that's all right. I would like if you and Joe would like to, uh, I would suggest probably Kevin Smallwood and uh, I have to see the president. Yes. Yeah, I was. Kevin and you guys get together and then. Uh, In the meantime, I'm, excuse me for, for interrupting, but I would uh, urge you to look at the important handbook, take a look at the benefits, how they're uh, set up in that ordinance. Some of those things are going to have to be updated. And uh, if you have an idea of what is already in there, it'll just make it a little easier for discussion. So if you would do that, I would appreciate it. And there's one here, and I'm sure we can get copies to you, at least of this part of it that is right now the most serious thing that we need to look at. We'll take a look at the whole thing, but I think that, that this is the part that really needs to be brought up. All right, thank you. Both of them have in wooden plastic. Yeah, it'll, it'll require both, yes. Okay, under planning, um, we have a request here uh, from the uh, St. Paul United Methodist Church, and they have met with the Planning Commission, and, the, and I'm representing the Planning Commission tonight. We're bringing it to council for a vote, and the Planning Commission recommended going along with this. And what the uh, church is wanting to do is they're wanting to close the alley that runs along uh, from the alley that runs east and west behind the, the Methodist Church, the alley that runs uh, north and south, uh, the little driveway where they have the food bank. They would like uh, to close that alley, and the reason they're closing that alley is they're going to uh, demolition the house there to the uh, west that they own, and they're going to make a bigger parking lot. And in making their parking lot, they would like to have the alley closed so they can move the entrance down to the middle of their parking lot when they build it, and also to funnel the water with the grade so the water runs away from the church so they don't have an issue. Uh, the recommendation from the planning commission is there is no problems with this, but we would need a vote from council tonight to uh, allow them to close. The first step in this procedure is to close the apple. Once the alley is closed, then they can proceed with their demolition or whatever they want to do. So if there's any, there's the diagram. If there's any questions from anybody. Do we need an ordinance to close the alley or can we just close it? Yeah. I don't think we did a resolution when we closed that one between now. Uh, no, but you should have. How else are you going to keep track of them? Because you'll have to change it down to the uh, courthouse too. The last one, when we changed that one on the other side of the street, we closed it, but the property owners each became half owned. And then they took it upon themselves to the courthouse and changed the records. The church is the owner on both sides of this. Yeah. That's how it's been done in the past. We have, we have resolutions. 
Okay. I don't know what they right. did before. Well, it to, it's okay with me that they yeah. close it. But it I, seemed to be the last time we council just voted to close that without resolution. Yeah. Resolution it comes to my mind, but it could very well be right. So. Okay. Well, I think it's an easier record to find. Yeah. Yeah. And to, it is. to file with. Well, they're not going to start tomorrow, so we'll just make a just inform the council what they want to do. We'll make a resolution. We'll write a resolution. Because report. forever the courthouse has been what they give you a, a blank map. I've never gotten it done. I've never. I got so many other things I've been doing, but they want a copy of every alley that's closed, which I think they have that, but some of them are missing. Uh, this goes way back, years back. And I had gotten a lot of the ordinances or the resolutions that closed the alleys. I just never got it written down on the map to give it back to the court out. But this has been a long time ago, too. But as long as they don't complain about it, I guess we don't get it done. Well, it's fine okay. unless there's a, a, a dispute about something, yeah. or something else. And then, you know, I think you're just better off to have it in that form. Okay. Well, we'll get a resolution for this then for the next meeting, and then you guys can vote, council can vote on that at that point. But to let you know what the, the uh, Methodist Church is one to do. I mean, it really, once they put move it down and, and do their do their parking lot, there'll be another entrance that the people can still right. drive across, just like they yeah. do on the other side now. Yeah. Because just, I don't think the other side was ever closed when they put the parking lot over there. It's so that's now. It never was. Yes. Yeah. So that left us to believe that there was no without a resolution, but we can look into that. I don't think that their parking comes into the alley easement right there. It they goes up to, it goes floors. all the way up to what Browns used to live there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like their separate accounts. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at that. But like I said, they're not one to start tomorrow. But and they'll be tearing that place down before they do anything. Well, probably. yeah, but they would like to have us close the alley so they can tear the house down and do the great stuff whenever we get around. Like, you know, like I say, they're not starting tomorrow, so we have time for that. So we're going to do that in the resolution. That's not an issue. Uh, BPA, I'll see if I have BPA here. You have, you're not aware of it, which I think most everybody is. The some white water avenue has been taken down. Good. Okay, we will do the uh, second reading of the chronic nuisance premises property ordinance in title only. Let's read the second reading. Chronic nuisance premise and property ordinance number 2013-03. Ordinance prohibiting chronic nuisance on premises and properties for the village of New Paris, Grove County, Ohio. Be it ordained and enacted by the village of New Paris, Grove County, a lot council, and it's hereby ordained and enacted by authority of the same as follows. That would be the second reading. I know that we approve this ordinance on the second reading. Pardon me? Do we need to vote to approve no. it or are we just going to read it? No. Just, just read in title only and we'll read in title only third time and we'll take a vote on the third time. For me, yeah. we used to vote three times. And it's, and it's not an emergency matter yeah. here, yeah. so we'll let it go three times. Oh, I don't know. Okay. 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 Uh, we have some items here that the uh, council has to just, just declare as surplus items. Uh, now that we have the new dump truck, we want to sell the old dump truck. We'd like to sell the snow plow with it. We'd like to sell uh, the salt spreader goes with it. Uh, and there's some other items listed here. Uh, the 98 Chevy 3544 dump bed, uh, the snow plow, the salt spreader. Then we have the uh, self prepared uh, the self-propelled weed and brush mower with a horse brake and strap motor on it. We have another push mower 
and we have a, a sergeant in Sowell four-way traffic light, and we have a large whirlpool air conditioner unit that, that we would, I would ask council to declare this a surplus. Uh, we have to do this before we can have an option to sell these items. What I would like to see done, and I would propose to council, is like to look into whatever we get out of this equipment. I'd like to see that rolled over towards a salt hopper for the new dump truck so we can preserve the life of the dump truck by not putting the salt in the bed. We have checked on those. We have no idea what we can get out of the old dump truck, but uh, the blue book on it's around 6,500. I don't know if we can anywhere close to that option or not, but what do we do? A uh, salt box for our trucks is going to be about $8,000. So uh, once we sell this, we'll come back to council. I would ask council to consider uh, using that money uh, and, and additional money for street department to buy a salt hopper. I think it would be beneficial to us. Uh, it saves the truck. It's a little safe, safer than riding around with the bed up, with the bed up in the air. Uh, the salt don't get wet, it don't clump together, it don't plug up the spreader boxes bad when it's enclosed. There's just a lot of benefits to having one of these salt boxes. I think it would be beneficial to us and to the village and the money we just spent on the new truck it would be beneficial to save the life of that as long as we possibly can. So having said all that, I would need a motion uh, to council to declare uh, these items uh, listed below as uh, surplus items. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Kathy? Yes. Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Thank you. We have a uh, training session here for Jama that would probably be beneficial for her seeing how she's uh, still learning uh, the financial officer and this train, uh, uh, training class is uh, for village financial officers, clerks and clerk treasurers and the amount for this is $65.
what it would take to move uh, the siren up to the water tower where the whole village would uh, benefit from it. Uh, the number that comes back uh, for the equipment for the sheriff department to be able to set this off in the sheriff's office without a manual set off is $6,200. And $6,206.50. And what I would propose to council of the nine is that uh, we put it in the new Paris News and ask for donations. So, you know, we don't have the money for it. Hopefully we would get a response from the community, seeing how we can get everyone in a storm situation. Uh, we do have a little money in the building that I think that we could uh, put in there, but the majority of this would have to come from donation from the village itself. Uh, be possible to get the fire department to back us with asking for donations to the event? I That's open for discussion here this evening as we are bringing this up to see what council would like to do with this. Or if it can I can bring it up to the trustees. Well, I, I mean, I just think the more people who are voicing their opinion that it's necessary, the better we may do for something like that. Um, if we knew what we could start it out with and just say, well, this is what we have. And the rest of the, I mean, I think that would be a plus too. We may not know what we would have to put into it, but um, put your money where your mouth is kind of works sometimes. But I do think that if we get the, uh, the fire department interested in promoting this with us. And, you know, it might work. It would help better. I think it would help. We can still promote it now and then get the... Uh, this, this, is simply, uh, this is simply open for discussion. I can see if the council is interested in, in asking the community for donations. If so, then we can get with the fire department or whoever and get an article put together for the New Paris News next next month. And by then we should have an idea of what kind of a base we can start with. And then simply ask for donations from the community I mean, for, for, a, for an early warning system, whether they want it or whether they don't want it. This is just, I'm throwing numbers out here tonight to council to tell you what it would take to get it done. Some of this is going to reflect back on us to, uh, and this portion of that doesn't cover everything. Some of it will have to be handled in-house. Uh, would be our responsibility, like taking the siren down and taking up their mounting. That would be on us. Uh, uh, install a si siren would be on us. Applying power to that would be on us, which Chris can do that. He's a master electrician. Uh, oh, I'm at Basically, what this sixty-two hundred dollars is is it, it, it is the uh, pretty sure better just than I am, but it's the signal that's going to have to be put in place for the sheriff's department to throw a switch in the siren and door. And have it So that's all. I like the idea of trying to get the public involved and that gauge the uh, amount of interest. That, you know. I mean, we you know they can pledge money, groups can pledge money or something, and we'll see how it starts out. But we'll how it looks like it's going to go. There's nothing else you can do. And I just feel like if if we have the backing of, of the fire department, I mean, you know, they're a safety. I don't know why we would need her. I, I, I think they'd be all right with doing that. Um, I think it, uh, it would be beneficial. Okay. So... I mean, I don't know of any reason why we can't go ahead and say that we're thinking about starting this fund and seeing where we can get and putting in the cost, the total cost of it, plus the other things that will be handled in-house. And then in the next month, if we get back, you know, the, the emergency services, basically, I think then maybe we can reprint it again. Oh, and at that time, maybe, well, that's why I said, oh, I pledge money. Yeah. 
you know, instead of just giving money, make a pledge of so much. And if it's an organization in town, I think you can pretty much guarantee that, that you're going to get what they pledge. Um, some people will pledge money, but I don't think you want to set something up and then have your you're short and you got to get your money back because we just can't do it. So but That's the reason we're having this discussion. Yeah, I, I think that getting pledges from different people in different organizations would be the way to go until, you know, if we're close, then maybe we can enable and rally and get some people to, you know, have a bait say, I don't know. But anyway, it's possible that if you get close enough, we'll be able to get it. How do we raise the money for that annual? Well, you do oh, have to. So council has decided we'll move forward with talking with the uh, Ralph I can the university idea. squad and then we can come to some type of arrangement to move, uh, move forward and put the, in the new Paris City that we're asking for uh, uh, pledges from the community uh, to uh, to reach the amount of 62 or 650 mm -hmm. to move aside. And if we know what we can safely pledge, I think that ought to be in there. Okay. You know, so that they're not, you know, people think that we just are rolling around with money down there. We're not. But, but I, I think if they know we're serious and that we, we're making the effort to do what we can for this, then it might make a difference. Okay, Ralph, if you would take it upon yourself, please, to relay this number to uh, the uh, uh, fire department and the emergency uh, side of it and get their feelings on it. And then uh, next month, maybe we can put something together to go into the Paris News and start asking for pledges. Well, their next meeting is the second Monday of the month, so I probably will be after our next meeting. Okay. Well, you can at least let them know what they can be talking yeah, about yeah, it. See, at least get a general feeling of you know, what they think about it or whatever. Monthly. I don't know if you're interested in that at all. 
I, I have no idea. But that's the report I got, and I told him, you know, we're just put feelings out there and see what's available, and, and I had no idea what the cost would be. Um, so uh, it's a thought to, to take with you tonight to see if you think we're interested in doing that or not. I haven't gone any further than that with it, just getting some raw numbers. And uh, uh, like West Alexandria, Eden, all of them have a website, yes, which do. I know that there's a big, they have their ordinances and everything yes. on it. We'll and if those things are sent to him in an email, it's no problem for him to just slap them right on there. I mean, it's all that fast, you know, so if they're in the computer anyway, and they're attached, sent as an attachment, it's my understanding that they just go directly in there and they're fine, so. Okay, well, take, take this also with you tonight, and then we'll do we'll a further uh, discussion on that next month as to what kind of things they would like to do with this or not. I'm not advocating, but I did, you know, want to see. I just wanted to find out what it would uh, take to get it set up and running, and it would be hours. And we might have a little more control of the, you know, just of the general feeling of the website. I've seen yeah. one of them myself. Yeah. 
Um, Most of the wolves that I have seen, I've seen with the slow moving signs on them. I did see one the other day. Most of the ones I have seen have had them on okay. here. There is one couple young guys that's running around town on the golf cart. I don't know their age. Uh, I think they got a slow moving sign on their on their golf cart, but they're just being kids and being here and there and everywhere. Uh, I didn't know what that. I didn't know. Yeah, I think at this point we just you know have the team keep an eye on things. If it gets to be a continued problem, and in the future it may come to a point where we have to have a, a harsher discussion about it. But I, I don't want to get into a position here where we're talking about organs and stuff on golf carts at this point, just because we could affect that business. No, but I've seen them now in some people's yards too that live here. There's so several, several yeah. Down there. Have their own. Some I, of those I, I want myself. I have no problem. Some of those residents even have well, some have the turn signals and stuff on them, so they're all they're all up to date. So yeah. I mean that's well I didn't know what the law was and yeah. I just don't want it to get out of hand. I know that at one time there was a problem with a North Golf Park here. Yeah. Yeah. Well like I say, I, I agree with the fact that we need to keep an eye on it. I agree with the fact that you know we'll we'll, we'll, we'll let the chief do his job. I don't think we want to get in a position of talking about ordinances and stuff against the I, I, I wouldn't want that to get out to uh, the park. Yeah, now. that we're thinking, be, we're thinking about. No, bar, no I don't want to hurt any business at all. We I need all the business. The registration yeah. fee might be in order where it would. Well, the so everybody comes down here and you're going to make them pay a registration fee to take their carts and all that. It's just a weekend camper. Yeah, you can't. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You carry it away here. I know we're talking about people. Well, how do you, how do you distinguish? It? I mean, who's camping? I mean, you, you, you got to be careful here. You carry away, guys. And so, yeah. So, we got to as far as at this point talking about. Chris, a mule doesn't come under the same category as a golf cart. A mule doesn't come under the same category as a golf cart. A mule is a golf cart. Uh, off road vehicle. It's like a golf cart. It's like the gator. Yes. You either have to register it or it cannot be on the road. There's one or two that come into town occasionally. They have a slow moving vehicle sign, and we've stopped them before and told them that again. Because the sheriff's office will enforce that out in the county just as well, you know, just like you will in town. You know, if it's caught on the roadway, you know, they can get a ticket and they can check them. Um, but yeah, the ORC specifies golf cars. All right, Beth, there's nothing else. I need a motion to adjourn. And the next meeting will be October 7th at 7 o'clock. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second.